Record again. There, I see it. I see a red thing. Are you recording now? <clears throat> yes, uh, okay. Well, I'm going to do a quick little intro and then we'll just get started. Mm -hmm. Welcome, one and all, to another edition of the Five Points International interview series highlighting movers and shakers in the African world. On this second edition, we're pleased to be here with the Honorable, the Eminent, the Professor. Yeah, I was getting just a napkin. <laughs> okay, Ibrahim Asek. Ibrahim Asek, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Okay, so thank you, Doctor, for gracing us with your time and, you know, for uh, making yourself available. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for inviting me. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was just wanting to give you an opportunity to uh, introduce yourself to the people um, a little bit about uh, where you're where you're coming from and uh, your 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 career, your history, and the things that you do. Yeah, my name is Rahim Sek. I'm from Senegal, West Africa. I was born 60 years ago on a corn field near the Senegal River. <laughs> yeah, I'm from a family of farmers and uh, cattle raisers. You know, I remember the time when my grandfather and my uncles coming to the to that town. It is a town. It is a city, a very old city on the Senegal River, and they used to come to the house, bring their camels and things like that. But at home, we were farmers, you know, we had a, a cornfield by the, by, by the river. <clears throat> and uh, my mother always raised cows and goats and I grew up in that. I wasn't supposed to be a historian or anything like that, just to take care of the cattle and cultivate the land. Mm -hmm. But my mom <clears throat> made the mistake to take me to school. <clears throat> it was, uh, I say mistake, you know, uh, it was really hard at the beginning, uh, you know, that colonial school where they beat you to teach you how to say A, B, C, D, E. Oh, of course, that was a French colonial school, A, B, C, D, E. And it went into a lot of beating. <clears throat> and I always mm -hmm. said to my mom, why did you take me to that school? They beat us all the time. He said, just sit in there, you will you'll know later. And then uh, I, st I did well. I always did well, and uh, my mom was not educated, but really smart. The only thing she knew, she knew in French, and which she, she always told me is premier. Premier. Uh, one one premier. Uh, you know, she spoke of Fulani, one premier. Be just the, 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 the number one mm -hmm. at school. Uh, I was often number one at school, but not always. But that's the, the, the only way for her to push me forward. And I kept doing well. And then uh, when I graduated, when I was 12 years old from, high, uh, from uh, primary school, they took me about 300 miles away up uh, down river to Saint Louis, Senegal, the first capital of Senegal and French West Africa. I spent there seven years for middle and high school at Lycée Charles de Gaulle, Charles de Gaulle High School. And uh, after my baccalaureate, uh, after graduation, uh, I landed at the history department uh, at the University of Dakar. And that was an accident. <clears throat> People were really uh, surprised because they always thought I would be uh, an English teacher or something like that. But I, I'm glad I did not become mm -hmm. a English teacher. I became, uh, you know, I found it really interesting to be a historian. And after four years, after my master's degree, I went to the uh, Economa Superior. That's uh, the uh, school for training teachers, education, uh, school of education of Dakar. Uh, I spent there one year. And then in 1985, I was uh, appointed a history and geography teacher at Lise Blesjang, Blesjang High School. So, I taught there for about 20 years and about 1993, 
no, after my first visit to, to the United States, that, that was in 1989. I was selected with uh, nine, uh, eight other African teachers, history teachers from Madagascar, from uh, Djibouti, Congo, Chad, uh, Niger, Mali, Guinea. Uh, it was nine of another us invited by the State Department to visit the United States. That's when the, this country put a lot of money in education and culture. So that's what they call the International Visitor Program. We started in Washington, DC, and then they took us to Springfield, Springfield, Illinois, where I saw the house of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, from Springfield, they took us to Oxford, Mississippi, then uh, to San Antonio, Texas, and then up Northwest to Seattle. And uh, we ended our visit with New York, you know. In, in fact, we, we landed in New York and then uh, also to go back to Africa, we flew from New York. So one thing is, uh, was really important in my career, visiting Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And you were hosted by the University of Mississippi at, at, Ole Miss, uh, at uh, Oxford, Ole Miss. And which year is this again? That was in 1989, September yeah. 1989. It lasted a year, I mean, no, not a month. Mm -hmm. So when we were hosted by the University of Mississippi at the time, uh, the direct, uh, the, they have uh, what they call the, the Center for the Study of uh, Southern Culture. Mm -hmm. You know who was the director? Bill Ferris. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Bill Ferris mm -hmm. and uh, he brought us a, a musician, a blues musician, James St. Thomas. Uh, yeah. Maybe you know you knew him and uh, he was one of the last Delta <laughs> blues singers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thomas, you know, I know. I didn't get to meet his father. Yeah, he, he was an artist. He, he made sculptures, but also uh, during the daytime, he buried people too, and did see his uh -huh. heart. And at mm -hmm. night, he took a guitar. Mm -hmm. Probably in the past, he picked cotton during the day, and then at night, he picked a guitar. Mm -hmm. So when he started playing, as soon as he started, you know, my mind just went back to Mali, to mm -hmm. Ali Park mm -hmm. I was so amazed to see someone like this, like, like uh, this uh, elderly man playing the guitar. And it reminded me of many musicians also from Senegal, from, the, from that Senegal river, Fulani musicians. And then the next Sunday, uh, our guy told us that uh, they have a, a black church. It would be interesting to, to, to see it. Nobody accepted to go, they wanted to sleep and, and I went. It was the second Baptist church in Oxford, Mississippi. At that mm -hmm. time, the pastor was Leroy Wadlington. We became friends. Mm -hmm. And I was so amazed to see this. It, it was fortunately the homecoming day. Mm -hmm. The church was packed. Mm -hmm. And I heard those people singing, you know, Negro spirituals and uh, the gospel. It was so amazing. And that also took me back home you know, with those brotherhoods, when they gather, when they get together for the, you know, religious festivals. And mm -hmm. all the time you were traveling through Texas, uh, uh, up to Seattle, Boeing, that all of this was nothing for me. And I kept mm -hmm. this way. There's something to, I need to do. I, I said, I need to study this. I have to mm -hmm. come back. And I don't want to go anywhere but uh, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. so I went back home, 1990. I always uh, had a very good evaluation from, uh, from uh, the director of my school. But when I came back, I, get, I got into depression. I was depressed and my grades went, went down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They thought I was crazy, I wasn't. I was, mm. my mind, uh, I, uh, I left my mind in Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went, I said, the best way to do this is to go and get a PhD, just like you are doing now. 
Yeah. I went to the university and I saw my advisor, Professor Umar Khan. May peace be eternally on his soul. And I told him I want to pick up a, 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 a dissertation topic to study the blues culture. Excuse me. He said, no, you can't do that, you know. How, how, how can you how? get uh, a scholarship, a plane ticket to go back to Mississippi? Be reasonable. <laughs> I, said, I said, okay, teacher, I'm gonna be reasonable. And he gave me a, a topic, uh, hold on a second. Mm. And he gave me a, a topic on uh, land conflicts in, in Futatoro. Futatoro is the, the area where I am. Mm -hmm. uh, where I was born, Futa, on the Senegal River. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I, I picked the, 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 that, uh, that topic. And a few months later, he called me. He said, you know what? You have to drop that topic. I said, why? He said, uh, I gave it uh, maybe two years ago to someone. I thought he was not doing anything about it. Now he's back to me and uh, he's working on it. I mm -hmm. said, okay, prof, now, can you allow me to, to work on that topic on the blues culture? He said, okay, go ahead, God bless you. Mm -hmm. The third thing I did is to go to the Centre Culturel American, the American Center, Cultural Center to learn English. Mm -hmm. Teaching full-time at the, at, the, at the high school and also doing 10 hours of English every week. And by the time I finished, they told me about a program, the Fulbright program. Mm -hmm. And they helped me to apply. I did, and I got it. Mm -hmm. And I did not make any choice where I would land in the United States. You know where they took me? Mm -hmm. Oxford, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. The center of the study of Southern cultures. Mm -hmm. I'm a believer. Mm -hmm. And I, I told myself, this is not just by chance. And I understood that uh, beginning uh, from, that, from that time that I'm on a very great journey. I'm on a mission and I'm going to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. I did very well in Oxford, Mississippi. I mm -hmm. went to all events, you know, if I'm not at the library or, you know, uh, studying, it was a non-degree program for just research and learning. Mm -hmm. I went to juke joints. I went everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I heard about Professor Peter Ashoff. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know him. He, he died uh, in 2002. I know the name. Yeah, Peter Ashoff was a great teacher. Mm -hmm. And he had a course at the Center for the Study of Southern Culture, a course on the anthropology of the blues culture. Mm -hmm. I attended his class. It was great. Mm -hmm. that, that's mm -hmm. where I discovered, you know, all these names, Robert Johnson, uh, Charlie Patton, every, you know, every single blues singer, uh, you know, we, he had videos or CDs. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, my, uh, for my paper, I didn't write a paper. I told him uh, I want to do a documentary. Mm -hmm. And I went also to pick a class at uh, the School of Journalism. Mm -hmm. uh, a class called the uh, TV Documentary Report. Mm -hmm. And I went to interview bluesmen around uh, in that area, uh, in, in Holly Springs. And uh, I, I, I was not lucky to interview R.L. Burnside, but I interviewed uh, Junio Kimbrough. Yeah. You know those people? I've seen Junior Kimbrough yeah. at his gym point. Yeah. Yeah, the Hill Country. I also interviewed people around Jim, Jim uh, Kimbrough. And I told uh, Jim, you know what? I went to Earl Burnside's uh, house, but he would not talk to me. He said, Ibrahim, don't, do, do, don't worry about it. He was just drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, uh, he, was, he was joking. But I, I saw them, all of them perform in Oxford, in Duke Joints, everywhere. Mm. And also, uh, I made a trip to New Orleans in December 1995. Mm. The program started in uh, August 1995 and ended in July, August 1996. So, 
I was I, living in New Orleans at that time. I didn't I was at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was still there. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that's one thing. The other thing is mm -hmm. my uh, encounter with Gondoli Midler Hall. When I was studying English, when I started to study English at the American Center, he had just published uh, Africans in Colonial Louisiana. Great book. 1992, hey, yeah, a great book. The next year, she was invited in Senegal for the inauguration of the West African Research Center in Dakar, Senegal, which was studied ah. by a Senegalese teacher and a lady from New Orleans, her name is Eileen Julian. Mm. So I heard about uh, the keynote speech of uh, Madame Hall, I went there. And also he, she was invited to the Ecole Normale Supérieure, the School of Education to do a, a, a lecture for the greater public in a big mm -hmm. auditorium, I was there. And that's when I, I listened to her talking about these Africans introducing rice cultivation in Louisiana, uh, building the economy of this country and also, and also shaping its culture. You know, the book, uh, the title is Africans in Colonial Louisiana, the making of uh, Afro Creole, uh, of Louisiana Afro Creole culture. Mm -hmm. I heard about Samba Bambara who led the first revolt in Louisiana. I heard about the Maroons. Mm -hmm. And after the lecture, after the le I went to meet her and I literally took the papers. Uh, she, she had a copy, a hard copy of her lecture. I said, Madam, I want to publish this. At that time, I was the Secretary General of the Association of the Senegalese uh, History Teachers, History and Geography Teachers. Mm. I published it in our, in our journal. And mm -hmm. I told her, Madam, I don't know where you live. I know you live in New Orleans. I know you live in New Orleans. But remember, I will find you. And I found her. So when I was in uh, Mississippi, I, uh, a friend of mine drove me to New Orleans. I wanted to see the Cypress Swamp and all of those things. And uh, Gwendolyn Midler Hall was living at the time uh, in, uh, uh, she was teaching at Rutgers University. She was finishing her career as a teacher and she allowed me to stay in her house. That's where I discovered Led Bailey, and she had a collection of Malian singers, Bubukar Traore, Ali Farbature, Led Bailey, and all of that. And her library was over there and available to me. And that mm -hmm. was an eye opening. And she became my mentor. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the summer of 1996, I, I left Oxford. You know, the Fulbright program allowed me to leave Oxford and go to New Orleans. Because Gwendolyn Midler Hall told me also, you need to be here in New Orleans, mm -hmm. in the archives. And then at the end of my program, I went back home. Uh -huh. August 1996. Mm -hmm. So I started writing my, my dissertation and following classes too. Mm -hmm. And then in 1998, the West African Research Center organized a conference in Dakar. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was asked to 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 present to to do something, you know, to to to, to present a paper. Mm. So I presented something I, I had already uh, I had written about uh, Louisiana. And in the crowd, one of the uh, there was a, a professor from Ghana, Kofi Anidoho. At that time, mm. he was the director of the School of Perform Performing Arts. Mm. He was there, sitting there, and uh, he listened to me at the end of my presentation. He came to me, he said, uh, uh, look, I have a program starting uh, for next year. It was in 1997, next year, 1998. It is a program that is uh, that, uh, a program of Code Syria, the Council for the Development of Social Research in Africa. The headquarters are in Dakar. And he said, we have a grant from the Ford Foundation. So, uh, the people who apply, if they if if they are selected, they will spend uh, a semester at Legon University in, uh, in Ghana, and then mm -hmm. a semester at Northwest University in Evanston, near Chicago. Mm -hmm. And he encouraged me to apply. I applied and I got it. Mm -hmm. I went to Ghana. 
Mm-hmm. And you know, Ghana, I was so overwhelmed by the culture over there. You know, we are up north and a lot of our culture was either eradicated, erased or weakened by Islam. Mm-hmm. But in Ghana, mm-hmm. I really was deep in the in African culture, mm-hmm. everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. And you know, you have layers of cultures as you travel north to Bulgatanga, Tamale, into Burkina Faso. Mm-hmm. When you go from the Akan world up to the Moshi world, you know, mm-hmm. it's uh, overwhelming. And Kofi Anidoho took us everywhere. Mm-hmm. From Akka to Takradi, to the uh, uh, border of Cote d'Ivoire. He took mm-hmm. us north to Kuma, uh, I mean, center to Kumasi, Sunyani, and also farther north to Tamale, Bolgatanga, Wa, Sandema, Gwolu in all those cities. And when we went to uh, Gwolu, they, they were digging the grave of the late President Ilaliman. Mm. Yeah. Mm. He took us to the Dagomba country, the Mampurshi, and then uh, east to what is that, uh, Keta, the mm-hmm. Volta region. Mm-hmm. So we saw every single uh, castle along the along the coast, from the Côte d'Ivoire to the frontier of Togo. He, we mm-hmm. did not stop there. We went into Togo and into Benin. Mm-hmm. In Benin, went up north to uh, what is the capital of that uh, of the Dahomey. Uh, but anyway, mm-hmm. so that was really something that was great for me, and I really realize you know what my uh, one of my professors were, was uh, Sheikh Ante Job. Mm-hmm. I, said, yeah, I wanted to in, talk to you about that yeah yeah in 1983 mm-hmm. and uh, he was a great teacher mm-hmm. and it was traveling in Africa that's where really I realized what he said that uh, you know the ethnic the ethnicities that are mm-hmm. like labels on us. Mm-hmm. But if you take that label off, we are all the same. Mm-hmm. African cultural unity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I mean, that, that's amazing. You're you're part of a, a mighty lineage because you say the name Shekanta Diop, and that says that mm. says everything. You know, it's oh yeah, that's a real thing. Yeah. There was a great teachers too, uh, Ibader Cham, who died recently. Umar Khan, mm-hmm. who always was my advisor, uh, let me name, uh, just f- to recognize all these great people, uh, Yoro, Yoro, Yoro Fal, uh, Ibn Masar Jain, Sekene Modesisho from Mali, mm-hmm. Musa Suma from Guinea, mm-hmm. uh, Cherno Jallo from Guinea too. Mm-hmm. So we were in, in good hands. Mm-hmm. See, it is really important to have good and great teachers. Yes. Education is the key to everything. Mm-hmm. Education, like uh, I think it's George Washington Carver said, is the key that unlocks the golden door to freedom. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After we left, uh, uh, when we finished our program in Ghana, they did a second selection for the people who would qualify to go to the United States. And I passed that test. Mm -hmm. uh, They took us to Northwestern University and uh, And, uh, we were hosted by PAS, the Program of African Studies, you know, studied by Melvin Herkowitz. Aha, Melvin Herkowitz, yes, yes, yes. And nearby, there was the Africana Library, mm-hmm. where you find almost everything you need to know about Africa, its history and culture. It was there available to, to us mm-hmm. in 1998. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And when I finished that program in 1998, uh, in June, I got on a, a Greyhound bus. Mm-hmm. Gwendolyn Middlehall told me, don't go back to Senegal. Uh, Come here before you you leave. And I got on a Greyhound bus from Chicago to New Orleans. 
And I found her working on the Louisiana slave database. Hmm. And she told me, uh, come on, sit down and help me identify these ethnicities. If mm -hmm. you go online and you Google Louisiana slave database, mm -hmm. the comments about the African ethnicities and also uh, uh, the naming practices, the name of people, Akan names, Fulani names, all of that, mm -hmm. you find them my comments in that uh, database. Okay. So I think I'm a, I'm a bit fortunate because uh, uh, I had all these opportunities and I took every opportunity I had. In 1999, July, I graduated. I got my degree in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And then I was hired part-time teacher at the university and then full-time teacher in 2003. Mm -hmm. You know, after my graduation in 1999, the next year in 2000, in May 2000, I traveled back to Louisiana with uh, the mayor of Gore Island in Senegal. You know, mm. Gore Island used to be a major slave port. Yes. Senegal, the, uh, the mayor, I became the advisor of, of the mayor. Mm. Had an invitation for a sister city program in Louisiana in St. Martinville in Southwest, Lu Southwest Louisiana near Lafayette. Mm -hmm. So when we made it to Louisiana, I told, I called Golden Middle Hall, I told, told her, I'm coming with a delegation from Louisiana. So, I don't uh, she, she knew John Cummings, a lawyer. Mm who became really rich in real uh, real estate mm -hmm. and who had just bought the Whitney Plantation. Oh. And he told uh, John, you should meet that delegation from Gore Island, the mayor and his delegation. And in that delegation, there is a young Senegalese historian. I was young at the time, you know, mm. it's all great. Mm. So he, he said, don't miss him, talk mm. to him and put him on your project. He came to meet us at uh, Tulane University. And at Tulane University, I managed to put in the delegation. I talked to the mayor. I told him you should have a musician in your delegation. The mayor agreed by the consular said no. They had uh, all kind of people in the delegation like traders or whatever, but for the mission, they said, no. I said, okay, you don't know what you are doing. That mission is Gelel Kumba. He's in- Gelel. Yeah, Gelel, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we, we spoke to you when, uh, when I last visited him in, in, um, in Oxford. Yes, That's yes. That's also another story, you know what? When I, they refused to put him in the delegation. But a few days later, he was invited to perform at the American embassy. <laughs> the ambassador was so happy and he went to meet Galil and greeting and said, good job. Mm -hmm. And Galil told him, you know, ambassador, I am invited to perform in, in, in Louisiana, but I cannot get a visa. Mm -hmm. He said, tomorrow go to the consulate. They will give you, they will provide that visa. Yeah. You know what? I went to, he landed in New York and then I told him, I gave him instruction to get on a Greyhound bus from New York to New Orleans. We didn't have money. Mm -hmm. And I went to pick him up from uh, the bus station. And when the, the delegation of Gore, they, they saw him, they told him, how come, how did you do it? Yeah, yeah. I said, you know, there is uh, someone up there. Nobody knows his name, you know. We call him God, Allah, or whatever, but nobody mm -hmm. knows. Only him know his own name. Yes, sir. Security. Mm -hmm. And when he decides something, it happens. You have to yes. be faithful. Yeah.
Some mm-hmm. call him Ja. Rasta. Rasta. <laughs> so Ja, you know, you cannot, uh, when he decides something would happen, it either happens. You have to be, to have faith. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The people who say they are atheists, those are people who are affected by how religion was, uh, you know, distorted and used as a tool for imperialism. That's why yes. they hate religion. Yes. But there is nothing wrong with religion. Mm-hmm. I mean, real religion. I'm talking about spirituality. Yes, sir. Spirituality. True. Yeah. yeah. So uh, John Cummings came to meet us at uh, Tulane University and uh, Galil performed over there. Mm-hmm. And uh, he met me too. We talked and then uh, he said, would you please tell the delegation that I'm inviting them to stay in my hotel downtown New Orleans on Gravy Street and come, come, the International House. Mm-hmm. Very highly rated five-star hotel. Mm-hmm. You know, when we were in New Orleans, we were getting ready to, you know, to all of us, 12 of us to, to stay in the house of Gwendolyn Midlow Hall. It was too tight. Mm-hmm. Everybody come to the hotel. So we stayed in New Hostel at the time we were in New Orleans, and then we flew back to uh, to Senegal. Yeah. But at that time, he told me, uh, Ibrahim, are you coming back anytime soon? Here in uh, Louisiana, I said, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will be back in the summer mm-hmm. to do some more research and work with Gondolin Middle Hall. Mm-hmm. When I came back in the summer, he gave my, my first task, uh, task was to write an article for him about uh, the Atlantic slave trade. Mm-hmm. And he paid me, he gave me $800 to write that uh, paper. Mm-hmm. 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 And that's when we started, you know. Uh, he hired me to be the director of research. Mm-hmm. And I would come every summer and stay through the, through the, through the fall from uh, July to October, and mm-hmm. then fly back home to teach at the University of Dakar. I did uh-huh. that for 12 years. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And in, in 19, I mean, in uh, 2012, mm-hmm. he was able to get a, uh, he decided to hire me full time. He said, you should come here in Louisiana, bring your family. Mm-hmm. And that's how we, uh, he went to get us uh, visas and uh, took the children to school, mm-hmm. all of them. And even my wife was back at the university. They all went to UNO. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, he spent a lot of money mm-hmm. on the, my family. And I will always be grateful to that man, John Cummings. He's of Irish origin, a very funny man, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> In 2012, December, I migrated to the United States. Mm-hmm. My family came the next summer in uh, August 19, uh, I mean, 2013. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the next year, in, in 2014, December 6, that's when we opened the museum. Mm-hmm. When I said, so far, I said they're doing research, director of research. I'm talking about the Whitney Plantation Museum of Slavery. Yes, which is deemed as the real first museum of slavery in the whole United States. Mm -hmm. I see. And I think uh, John Cummings, he had the money. Mm -hmm. And I contributed with the research. So all what what I did and other people also who joined us into the research team was uh, implemented on the ground to build those memorials where we have four memorials. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me show you. I think I can. Okay. Uh, hold on a second. Mm-hmm. I, I need to go to share screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Host disabled participant screen sharing. You need to. Oh, hold on. Yeah, you disable you disable something. Hmm, 
Mm-hmm. I'll make you the host. You make me the host? Yeah, okay. and then you can. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Hold on a second. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Mm-hmm. Can you see the screen? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. You can see it? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, I'm going to uh, put it mm-hmm. So this is uh, the, the Whitney Plantation in 1968. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see in the middle, you have here in the middle, the, the big house. Mm-hmm. The plantation store, that's after slavery. Mm-hmm. Engineer or the buildings here. So mm-hmm. this is the way it was when he bought it. There was mm-hmm. nothing here mm-hmm. in the back. Mm-hmm. And this is the ground where we built the memorials. <clears throat> this is the big house. Mm-hmm. Another view of the big house. Mm-hmm. That's a luxury. You know, uh, the Whitney Plantation is on the German coast. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the founder of... Côte des Allemands. Oh, yeah, yeah, La Côte des Allemands. Mm-hmm. So it, this was a Heidel plantation. Mm-hmm. When they came over here in Louisiana, you know what happened to them, you know? Many died of starvation. And mm. then uh, those who survived uh, became farmers. Mm. And uh, they became really wealthy when they had the opportunity to have Africans working for them for free. Mm-hmm. From starvation to luxury, you see, this is luxury. Mm-hmm. And the house I just showed you is a really highly rated house. This is the kitchen. Hmm. Look at those pots. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, the kitchen is built out of the house. You know, Louisiana, it's very hard. Yeah. So, and the master did not have to be bothered with uh, heat uh, orders and, uh, and smoke and all of that. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. The kitchen, slave cabins on the plantation. Mm-hmm. On the, the, slave ca- uh, or the slave cabins and the killers. Mm-hmm. I call them killers, these kettles. Yeah, yeah. These kettles killed many of our ancestors here in Louisiana, making sugar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, these were in the sugar mill. Mm-hmm. And you know how they boiled the, the juice to, 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 to granulation? It was a very dangerous process. Mm-hmm. And you see, this is the ownership of Whitney Plantation. It started with Ambrose Heidel from Germany. Uh-huh. And then uh, Jean-Jacques Heidel, his younger son. This is the second uh, generation born in Louisiana, Jean-Jacques Heidel Jr. and Marceline Heidel. Mm-hmm. Marie Azli Heidel, the wife of Marceline, the last uh, Heidel owner of the plantation. <coughs> mm-hmm. And then he went to Bradish Johnson, who was from Louisiana, but uh, who made his career in uh, New York. Mm-hmm. Then uh, it became the property of Saint Martin, Perret, and Tasse, and uh, Perret and Tasse. Then mm-hmm. Bonds, Formosa Chemical and Fiber Corporation, and then John Cummings, 1999. Mm-hmm. Like I met him the next year he bought this plantation. Mm-hmm. He's uh, him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Samba is my, is my African name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I'm the mm-hmm. second boy in my family. OK, OK. This is a church that was donated to the, to the plantation. And uh, inside the church here, these wow. are the children of Whitney, built by uh, an African-American uh, uh, artist. He, uh, his name is uh, Woodrow Nash from Akron, Ohio. Mm. You know well about uh, the, uh, the sl- what they call the so-called slave narratives that were collected in the 1930s by the Federal Writers Project. Yes. Those people who were... F- Enslaved, who were born enslaved, were still alive when they were interviewed in the 1930s. Yes, sir. But the, the memories of, the, of slavery they were delivering were memories of childhood. That's why we decided to pick those stories 
stories mm -hmm. to make them available to the public, mm -hmm. engraved on granite. People mm -hmm. telling themselves, you know, what they what they had lived on these plantations. Hmm. So instead of representing them as uh, like elderly people, we decided to represent them as children, you know, yeah. to just match those mm -hmm. childhood memories. And we mm -hmm. call them the children of Whitney. Wow, powerful. It really works. Mm -hmm. You know, some, sometimes people go, you know, when they go to plantation, it is fun. Uh, yes, I'm going to a plantation. But when they get to the Whitney at the beginning, you see them in the welcoming center buying, you know, things, the gift shop, mm. agitated. But yeah. one day we take them through the, the tour, the church, and they see the, these children, they yeah. all become quiet. Yeah. Until the end of the tour, discipline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are the children of It's people. powerful, you know, there's mm. so much denial of the history. I'm sure that. Um, People have violent reactions, emotional reactions to having to deal with the history that they have been avoiding so long. Yeah, you see, the problem of this country and many countries all around the world is education. Mm. Hidden history. Mm. Many people who come to the plantation, black and white, they often say, why nobody taught me that? You know, in school. Hear it all the time, yeah. I know a lady who told me she didn't know anything about slavery until she saw roots. Hidden history hurts. Yeah. Hmm. But you know what? You know what? Truth, truth is like fire. Yes. You may decide to sit on it, hide it, and sit on it. But not for too long. <laughs> they burn you. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't know why this country is so stubborn. The problem mm -hmm. of America is a problem of hidden history. Yeah. But you cannot hide it. You can run, but you can hide. Hey, we we dealing with the fire right now, aren't we? Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, yesterday I was doing an uh, exchange on Facebook with friends. Mm. And I told him this country is going toward its destruction. Mm. The only thing that can save this country is education. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And decide to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Go to real reparations. Mm -hmm. Spiritual healing. So much mm -hmm. of blood mm -hmm. was spilled in this country. Yes. They killed Native Americans. Mm -hmm. They killed Africans, enslaved them, and used their labor. Mm -hmm. You cannot do that and hope to have peace. Mm -mm. And sooner or later, if they don't do real reparation, this country is going toward its destruction. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We have, but I'm confident we have people like Trump. Mm -hmm. But even with people like Trump, we learn something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have very good people in this country, too. Mm -hmm. No matter the shade of the color, I mm -hmm. hope they will fix it. Mm -hmm. When Americans understand something, uh, when they understand the right thing to do, they can fix the, uh, fix things. If they don't, yeah. the country is going toward destruction. Yeah, you think mm -hmm. of individualism, the American selfish concept of individualism has anything to do with the the reason why we're in such a bind? Absolutely. This is a system. Yeah. A system. Mm -hmm. And this country was built for the people who have money. True. It's only they are, they are just yeah. we are just hanging in here working for them. Yeah. But this country is for people who have money. And look at the, the people who have money. They have amassed so much wealth since the beginning of the pandemic. Those people, mm -hmm. they, like you say, it was built for them. So even when times are bad, they do great. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the way this country is built. Yeah. And this yeah. cannot last forever. No, true, true. Uh, it, cannot, hmm. it cannot last forever. 
Well, I wanted to ask you also, um, you touched upon um, the connections between Senegal, Senegambia, and South Louisiana. So I wanted you to speak on mm -hmm. uh, the linguistic heritage okay. that connects the cultures, mm -hmm. and especially also the concept of gumbo. Okay, let me get to that. You see, uh, this is uh, the Wall of Honor. Mm -hmm. dedicated to all the people who were enslaved on the Whitney Plantation. This is another view of the Wall of Honor with our ambassador mm -hmm. who visited us, Ambassador Amodijan, Ambassador of Senegal. Mm -hmm. the, the place named after Gondley Middle Hall, we used the name in the database to make this virtual cemetery. Mm -hmm. yep. The Field of Angel, dedicated to children who died in slavery. Mm -hmm. Another view of the angel, we use a lot of art to tell the story of slavery. This uh, mm. sculpture was built by uh, Rod Moorhead of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have also a memorial dedicated to the people who fought in the 1811 slave revolt in Louisiana, the largest ever, 20 years mm -hmm. before Matt Turner. Mm -hmm. You know, these people decided to do the, just like Haitians to be free and build mm -hmm. a, free, a free country. Mm -hmm but they didn't have enough firepower. A lot of determination, but not enough firepower. Mm -hmm, so they were mm -hmm. killing the actions and went missing, but most of them were captured and taken before tribunals of uh, slave owners, and uh, most of them were killed. Mm -hmm. Shot to death in front of the plantation where they belong and then beheaded and the heads were posted on poles. And that's mm -hmm. the meaning of this uh, memorial. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see. So <clears throat> let's go to culture. Mm -hmm. These are people who were enslaved in Louisiana and the first black male, two of the first, three first black males of New Orleans came from this family, mm -hmm. went on the Heidel Plantation. I'm talking about the family of Mark Morial, who is here. Yes. The third mayor, Mark Morial, and uh, his father, Dutch Morial. This is the Dutch. master, Sibyl Heidel. Mm hmm I see. Yeah, I know all of them. This is Jack. Mm. I'm, uh, I'm almost uh, okay. There. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, I always told the people at the museum, slavery, and in all my lectures, slavery is not only a history of deportation, hard labor, mistreatments we have to think about one thing they build the economy of this culture of this of this country basically africans built and their descendants built the foundation of the economy of this country during slavery and also during slavery under another name during jim crow but beyond all of that we have to think also of culture they contributed tremendously to the definition of American culture. Mm. In fact, all what makes this country so what we like, the America we, we like was built by enslaved Africans and African Americans. Mm. Mm. And can be the, the mm. music, blues, jazz, zydeco, rock and roll, rap, hip hop. Red beans and rice. Gumbo. Red beans and rice. Gumbo. Jambalaya. Couscous. Yes, yes, yes. The way you walk, the way you talk. Yes, sir. So I always tell them we have to also talk about the culture. It has to be there. Mm. I was successful to have uh, panels about culture in the welcoming center. Mm. But culture is not out there, just like the four memorial I, I did show you. Mm -hmm. for, for, unfortunately, you know, COVID uh, is slowing down everything. But I hope that one day when you go through, you know, the, 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 the museum, it is an open air museum, culture will be there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is the different area where the people came from. They came from all, from all over the place. But mm -hmm. most of them came from Senegambia. Mm -hmm. Now, what I call Senegambia, that's what I call the maritime provinces of the Empire of Mali. Yes, I. We West Africans 
we are all Malians. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that. Mm -hmm. And we have also to define what is Mali. Mm. Mali is not only the, the, now the Republic of Mali. Mali was something that went from uh, like uh, from, from Senegal to toward Lake Chad. Yeah. From the Ivory Coast, Guinea, all the way to into the Sahara Desert, they controlled the trade routes to uh, uh, to North America. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, North Africa. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't enough. The Emperor B B Bakari II decided to, to to go across the ocean, and he, and he did it. Yeah. It is yeah. well documented. The Arab people themselves, when Mansa Musa, when he didn't come back and Masa Musa succeeded him yeah. and Masa Musa decided to travel to Mecca for the pilgrim pilgrimage. He mm -hmm. stopped over in Cairo and he was influenced by uh, Al-Omari. Mm -hmm. He told them about the history of uh, uh, Bakari II, but all of that is hidden history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, uh, this is a map from the, uh, uh, what is the name of the, the Atlas of the Atlantic slave trade. Mm -hmm. Right, you see, the vast majority came from Senegambia, which uh, in which I include Sierra Leone, about uh, mm -hmm. about more than sixty percent, mm -hmm. and most of them came from the interior. They were Bamana. Came from again? What you say? They came from uh, from the interland, from uh, mm -hmm. you know, country like like, like uh, most of them from Mali. Mm -hmm. Bamana. Bamana people, Mandingo. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mande people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, certainly Senufu, Bozo, mm -hmm. all of those people. But you know, uh, I'm confident that the, these people will just decided to, when once in Louisiana, to identify themselves as Bamana or, or, or Mandingo. Yeah. You know, how people. Uh, in uh, deportation, how people tend to uh, stick to, 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 to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is uh, the philosopher and political at the Marquis de Condorcet. Mm -hmm. He found people that uh, you cannot blame Africans for this mess. Mm -hmm. Organize everything. You mm -hmm. put your money in there, you put your guns and whatever. You cannot blame Africans for that. Mm -hmm. and slavery and the slave trade. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are the nations you find on, uh, on the on the Whitney Plantation. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the from, from Senegambia, Wolof, Fulbe, the mm -hmm. Pular in Senegal, mm -hmm. Bamana, Mandingo, mm -hmm. not Bambara, but, but Bamana. Mm. Bamana. Mm -hmm. They call here Bambara, but they call themselves Bamana. True, true. Les gens du refus, uh, people from the Bight of Benin. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. These are pictures I took when uh, Kofi Aino Doho took us to, uh, to Vida. Mm -hmm. you know? mm. Mm. So people from the, from the Bight of Bia, Biafra, from, from Nigeria, from Congo, from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Let me go further. Mm. Oh, so before I uh, talk about uh, this material culture, we they call mainstream English, but what do you call that mainstream English? to distinguish it from like uh, what they call uh, black uh, vernacular English. That mainstream English is full of Africanism, African words. Yes, yes. And the way you speak it, all of that is profoundly uh, influenced by Africans. Hmm. That's why what, what makes American English different from uh british english true australian english mm -hmm. yeah since you are a blues singer i will start with mojo yes and you know what mojo is i'm going down in louisiana to get me a mojo hand i want to fix hand. Yes, so sir. you won't have another man 
Mm-hmm. Late uh, Moody Waters after uh, Lightning Hopkins sang, sang Got My Mojo Working. It's just mm-hmm. not working on you, baby. Mm-hmm. And someone, I think it was Mick Jagger also, took pick it and uh, gave gave it a sexual connotation. That's how they do, yeah. It has nothing to do with sex. Mm-hmm. And we know that Mojo is from, uh, according to studies by linguists, is from uh, uh, West African languages like uh, like Fulani, Mocho. Mm-hmm. That's uh, healing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have uh, many other other words. Let me think. Uh, can you suggest another, another word? Oh, hmm. the most uh, maybe you don't know that word, uh, you know. But people of uh, older generation use it a lot. Jazz singers, including hmm. uh, Charlie Parker. Hmm. He was interviewed by someone who was doing research and who published a book in 1964, mm. uh, the jazz lexicon, mm. one of a call called gold. And there's one word over there, jump. J-A-M-F, don't be a jump. Mm. <laughs> and uh, a jump in that jazz lexicon, it is defined as being a trader. Oh. Être un traître, trahir les gens. Oui, je comprends. To, to, mm-hmm. to, be, to betray people. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And when uh, Charlie Parker was, what, what is the meaning of that word? He said it is an acronym. That means, sorry to say this straight, jive ass motherfucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. I said no, 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 Charlie. Uh, mm-hmm. That's a that's a mandingo word, a bamana word. Jamfa mm-hmm. mani. Oh, you know jamfa is not only in mandingo uh, and bamana mande languages, but also in Fulani. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jump for more yen. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. It is bad to betray people. Uh huh. You know, oh, is... that's, that's deep. It makes uh-huh. me think of uh, my my grandmother, my great grandmother. She was always called Ba by the family. That was her name, Ba. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I traveled to Mali, I learned what Ba meant. I did not know. I didn't know. I was just knew that my grandmother, her name was Lula Rush, but everyone called her Ba. You know, back in those days, everyone had an African name. Mm-hmm. And um, anyway, uh, it just made me think of it. Go on. You were talking. No, when you say Ba in Mandingo or Obamana, uh, that can mean great. Or the elder, mm-hmm. like Surukuba, the great hyena. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, yeah, we said mojo, we said jump. What about juke? Hmm? Juke or juke? Like a juke joint? Yeah. Uh, I remember reading something about it in the dictionary, uh, the dictionary built by Clarence uh, Major mm. about uh, Juke, but I don't remember what she, what she exactly wrote, uh, what she said about it. Mm-hmm. Probably linking it to Wolof. Mm-hmm. Juke mm. may meaning to rise up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. What do you know about that word? Oh, you know, I don't, I don't know much. That's what I was asking you. I had heard um, some things, but I don't. It's been a long time. I don't have the sources, so I don't want to say anything right. wrong. Mm. But um, another word that comes to mind also is boogie. You have any etymology on the word boogie? Boogie woogie. Hmm. I know that uh, an English, uh, an English uh, writer, mm. David Delby, linked it to. To Bugarabu. Mm-hmm. 
which is a, a type of music from uh, Kazamas in Senegal. Boogie. Mm -hmm. You know, also, um, my, ah. my friends in Conakry, when they see someone who has a lot of weight and someone is heavy, they say Boogaloo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But we have Boogaloo in, in, in Louisiana too. Mm. Okay, Boogaloo, exactly. Uh -huh. How about Boogaloo? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can link it to all of Boogaloo. Mm -hmm. Boogaloo is to hurt yourself mm -hmm. with joy, mm -hmm. with dance. And you know that makes sense because when you're getting down, someone's going to say, Don't hurt him, don't hurt him. Absolutely. <laughs> and you know that song by Led Belly? I'm um, dig a hole to put the devil in. I'm um, yeah. to put the devil in. How can you uh, dig a hole to put the devil in? You don't do it with shovels. Mm -hmm. You do it with your feet dancing mm -hmm. so hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And opening that hole, you know, that's yes. that's why in wall of sell Torahal Satan. Mm. Torahal Satan is give uh, is to give hard time to the devil oh, wow. by dancing on it you know <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> in the dance he close on crater pour enterrer le diable why why to enterrer le diable why voilà trochal satan there are so many uh, so many things you see uh africans have to be involved in diaspora studies yeah we are not enough involved in diaspora studies that is and i think we have a lot to contribute to the study of the diasporas mm -mm. because what we can see people who are born and raised here cannot see enough mm -hmm. we have the experience of African culture in our country and then when you get over here and you have the the, 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 the luck to be lucky enough to discover African American culture mm -hmm. and everything you see takes your memory back to Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are so many words, you know, uh, I, I have them in my upcoming book. No, I just don't remember now. But we talked about rice cultivation. Mm -hmm. You see this uh, Acadian lady, lady here. Mm -hmm. She was, mm -hmm. uh, was taken in 1904 in Crowley, Louisiana, using a mortar mm -hmm. and a pestle. Mm -hmm. And you see this... Uh, Straw mat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like we do it in Africa. Mm -hmm. She's processing right here. You have African ladies processing millet. Mm -hmm. to say that country mm -hmm. and of course not only they brought with them you know rice cultivation mm -hmm. and also the making of grits mm -hmm. actually how many grits mm -hmm. the grits you, may, you make with broken um, corn yeah, that's what i grew up on yeah yeah mm -hmm. that's a signature food along the senegal river mm -hmm. Corn is not indigenous of Africa, but once we got it, it became mm -hmm. a very important staple for us. And we've been making grits for how many grits for for for, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. so, so I was following um, a, a thread the other day on Twitter, and people were saying that uh, there's so many different ways to make gumbo. And from my grandmother, she was from. She was from Thibodeau, Bayou Lafouche, but she grew mm -hmm. up in New Orleans and also Lake Charles. And when she would make gumbo, she would make it with okra. And I never knew that there was a concept of gumbo without okra, but I noticed on Twitter, they had this discussion that I took part in where people were saying, oh, you can have gumbo without okra. And I was like, well, gumbo means okra. So mm -hmm. I wonder what is your take on that? You know what, the next time you meet them, tell them, no okra, no gumbo. Ah, thank you. Gumbo okay. has to have okra in it. Otherwise, yeah. it is something else. Soup. <laughs> yeah, soup is a two. Yeah. 
But you okay. know, the real, the real gumbo is smothered okra mm -hmm. from Mali. Ah. The Southwest Blues, they call it gumbo favi. Mm -hmm. Gumbo favi in Southwest Louisiana, that meant to smothered okra. Mm -hmm. You know, with spices and seafood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and Devi mm -hmm. is the name for okra among the form of Benin. The form, uh -huh. yeah, they call it Fevi. Mm -hmm. So they have Gombo Fevi in Louisiana, Gombo Zerb, Le Gombo Ozerb. Right, right. File Gombo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> file Gombo is just like a, 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 a file, mm -hmm. that's the powder from the sassafra leaves. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they call it Fakohoi in Mali, among the Songoi. Ah. It is made from, uh, you know, the principle is just uh, like to have something like a, a thickener. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is important is not the product, but the, 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 the cooking style. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And of course you can make gumbo with uh, herbs, but it, it, it has okra too. Do you know Leah Chase, she died recently? Duki Chase restaurant? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Madame Blair Chase said it has to have, uh, uh, the ideal is to have uh, like uh, different kind of leaves, uh, an odd number. It has to be three, five, seven, nine, but it mm. includes okra, mm -hmm. gumbo zerb. Mm -hmm. What I was saying, uh, file gombo, uh, uh, among the songo, they use what they call fakohoi. It is mm -hmm. some kind of powder from uh, the leaves of a tree. Mm -hmm. But also among the mandingo and you know, all of uh, West Africa, at least I know that they, uh, gombo is grown during the rainy season. And then you, you dry it, you pound it, and you turn it into powder. And you just like file. That's what they call in Bamana Ganjalan. Mm -hmm. Ban is gombo, jalan mm -hmm. is powder, mm -hmm. jalan. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, dried, uh, dried, uh, dried gombo. Jambalaya is a dish from Senegal. Mm -hmm. That's the, the origin. Mm -hmm. uh, that, this kind of recipe is made with rice. It is not a very old recipe, but it was born in St. Louis, Senegal, Gore Island. Uh, Rufisk, <clears throat> mm -hmm. the Gambia. Mm -hmm. It is a Creole cuisine. You know, Creolization did not start here. Yeah. This dish was created in an area where black people and white people met. Mm -hmm. Plassage did not start in, in, in Louisiana. When white people uh, mating with black people, it started mm -hmm. along the coast of Senegambia. Mm -hmm. And the first side of Creolization are there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the style of cooking rice with, uh, you know, fried rice and fish or whatever, or it can be chicken or, or meat or whatever, it started right there on the coast of Senegal. It is well documented. Mm -hmm. And who took it down the coast all the way to Ghana, Nigeria, Cameroon, where it was called Jollof rice. Jollof is the land of the Wolof. Mm -hmm. Yes, I. Mm -hmm. Just like uh, our people who were deported north to North Africa took couscous over there too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We don't call it couscous. Couscous is an Arab word. Mm -hmm. But the product itself, it is our signature food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today, Moroccans, the people of Morocco and uh, Algeria, they are in a big uh, contest. Who owns couscous? Yeah. <laughs> And they don't even think about our ancestors who were enslaved over there and who mm -hmm. held their uh, ancestors' kitchens. Mm -hmm. Al Bakri, who was uh, an uh, Arab uh, geographer from Andalusia, who, who he lived in Cordoba, he wrote about uh, how these people went to Africa and uh, bought these ladies because of their culinary. Uh, expertise. Mm -hmm. So couscous is for us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. 
but they, yes. they, will, know, they, they will know all of this. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Do you know about the, the Bouquet and Lapin mm-hmm. Tales of Louisiana? I've heard some, yes. Mm. And I, it also reminds me of Bray Rabbit as well. Yeah, uh, Lapin became Bray Rabbit. And mm-hmm. Big Bookie became Bro, Bro Fox in the in the English speaking, I mean, South. Mm-hmm. But this character came from Africa. Bookie mm-hmm. is the world of name for the hyena. Mm-hmm. Bookie is Suruku in Bamana. But you have okay. the same all, 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 all over West Africa. Mm-hmm. I have a good uh, uh, friend of mine, a colleague who is at the University of North Florida. His name is Keith Cartwright. Mm. And he's really the number one scholar about these, these things. And uh, uh, he's among the people who trace mm-hmm. Buki and Lapin, not only from Senegal, from Mali, all the way to, to the United States, but also all the way into Hollywood. Mm-hmm. That bunny is from Africa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's funny, he would always say, what's his signature phrase? What's up, Doc? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I have an article by him uh, being published in Senegal right now. Uh-huh. And I remember reading that uh, signature phrase. What's up, Doc? Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. And there's the banjo right there. We see it. That's it. That's the, the Ngoni. Mm-hmm. Hood. Mm-hmm. Did you have the opportunity to read uh, Samuel Charter's book, The Roots of the Blues Culture? When I come to it? I have not read that book yet, no. Yeah, uh, you can get it. it is Charter's, Samuel yeah. Charter's, The Roots of the Blues Culture, When I come to He went to Mali, uh, he went to Senegal to get a visa for Mali, the Gambia. And he basically followed uh, the itinerary of uh, Mongo Park. Yeah. Or go to Segu. Mm-hmm. He did a great job. Mm-hmm. But he missed one point, something about uh, the music he heard. He just called it, deemed it Arab, you know, Arab influences or whatever. Mm-hmm. Not knowing that uh, when black people were playing the banjo, the Arab people were not, did not come into history yet. When that culture was in the pyramids, it is well documented, you know, mm-hmm. but playing that. Say that uh, again, you cut out a little bit. Say that again. When... I said, uh, Samuel Charters mm-hmm. went to the conclusion that uh, this music uh, is Arabic, is from the Arab, mm-hmm. uh, influenced by the, the Muslim, the Arab people. Just like he said, the, the, the flamenco was. But I, Black people have been playing this at a time when even the Arab people did not come into history. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> And it's you. well documented. You can find mm-hmm. it in, in, the, in the pyramids. Mm-hmm. Like the, the, the tomb of uh, Ramses, uh, Ramses, uh, Ramses the third. Mm-hmm. See these beautiful ladies playing, even the ladies playing playing that banjo. Mm-hmm. And I call it the roots of all of, of all American music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very true. You, you know, you know, uh, you know very well why b- black people drop the banjo. You don't mm-hmm. find many black people playing the banjo. Mm-hmm. Because the material is important. The African banjo, uh, you know Don Vapi? Yeah, I know Don. Yeah, I played with Don, yeah. Yeah, uh, Don, uh, he... I was involved in a panel with him. Mm-hmm. And everything I said, he did show it to the, to the public and we did not communicate about it at all. When mm-hmm. I told him that uh, the Dungoni is a drum hidden under strings, you know, 
just like uh, the church here was telling the blues man that this is haram, you know, mm. it's the devil's music. Mm -hmm. And I said, Dungoni or the wood, of, of, or the hood, I would say it in, 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 in Fulani, mm -hmm. was the, the instrument that became really, uh, really popular in a context mm -hmm. dominated by Islam. Mm -hmm. And you found Grio holding Dungoni even around the Marabu. Yeah. So when I say that to, to Don Vapi, he, he uh, dismantled his banjo and he showed me there's a drum inside the banjo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I told him also, uh, black people walked away from from banjo because of the materials too. Mm -hmm. This is mostly iron, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. It is not just like the the, the African goni. And he told me, yes, you you're right. The African goni has a softer sound mm -hmm. because of the materials you use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is wood. Le uh, I mean, uh, hide. You have a hide. You know, also the strings mm -hmm. were formerly made with a horse, a horse, horse tail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, those uh, those those strings, you, you cannot just pick it up from a, a dead horse. It has to be a, a, a horse that is live. Uh, alive mm -hmm. and also uh the the the, the body of the dongoni yeah. it is better to get it from a tree that carries very sweet fruit aha uh -huh. which uh -huh. tree now uh, i can be uh i don't know the name in english uh en français on dit jujubier and even a mango tree Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. En quoi? Uh, le jujubier. Jujubier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. J u j u b i e r. Okay. Uh, it it carries very 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 sweet uh, kind of fruit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, black people. Hmm. Get down. Yeah, you always see a banjo. And mm -hmm. when you see black people, you know, performing in the in the world south, mm -hmm. and I think that we dropped the 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 what is it, the violin? Yeah, Phil. I think it is not a very convenient instrument for for bluesman like uh, playing like this and singing at the same time. Mm -hmm. We play our violin like this, but they impose mm -hmm. this on us. And mm -hmm. I think that, I think that uh, just uh, Took us away from uh, from the from from the violin. I don't mm -hmm. see many people playing the playing the violin. Did you ever hear Ken Ray Fontenot? Who? Ken Ray Fontenot. Maybe I heard his music. Uh, he played the violin. Yeah, he's a Creole fiddle player from uh, from South Louisiana. He might have been from Opelousas, Mamu, somewhere around there. Uh -huh. um, I yeah, I got to see him at the Festival uh, International in Lafayette uh, years ago. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, I haven't seen him yet. Yeah, he passed away years ago, but he was with uh, Boisek Ardouin. Uh, Ardu okay. Yeah, Boisek and Kanre Fatno. Anyway, mm -hmm. he was, he was uh, so. Uh, I, I want to share this with you. Mm -hmm. uh, I always like to play this, uh, to, you know, to all our people to hear how Dungoni is so soft. Mm -hmm. like, can you hear it? Yeah. This is a friend of mine. This was recorded here in Mississippi in 2013.
he's a uh, yeah. His name is uh, Demaja. Mm. Okay. How can I do? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, okay. okay. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. His name is Demaja. Mm. And uh, like I told you, I'm on a mission, uh, but a difficult one because <coughs> people don't al always understand. And uh, I've been fighting to get uh, African musicians and African American Americans to perform together here and over there mm -hmm. in Africa. That's why I started years ago the Bookie Blues Festival. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's One where we ago. first, that's where I first heard of you. Yeah, uh, you were invited in 2005, but we couldn't make it. We didn't have the money. No. <laughs> and you know what? For the first edition, I didn't know you yet, but I have mm -hmm. uh, some uh, regrets. When I went to the embassy of the United States for funds, they accepted the project and uh, then they asked me, what do you want? I said, I want a, a blues singer from Mississippi. I want also a keynote speaker. They said, who? I said, Peter Ashoff, my, my, my professor. Mm. He came to Senegal, he was the keynote speaker. And uh, they also asked uh, Peter Ashoff, who should they pick? He had two names, or shortlist, two names, your name and the name of the Super Chicken. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. when they heard Super Chicken and Corey Harris, they said probably super 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 chicken will be mm -hmm. but you know uh and for the second edition also i tried to 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 to, to get you to uh, to come to senegal but it did, it did not work yeah it did not it, but uh, we, we will do it uh, one day africans and african americans have to get together mm -hmm. that dialogue has to be established mm -hmm. you know? yes mm -hmm. uh, uh, Unfortunately, we often speak about uh, African unity, unity African, mm -hmm. but people don't know how to how to proceed. Mm -hmm. And I think culture should be first. Yeah, we have to make to, to, to make it possible. And I think somewhere somehow there are some uh, people who don't want us to be united. Mm -hmm. Because if, if you get united, you'll be too strong for them. Mm -hmm. And as long as we are not united, we Africans will be weak forever. And you African-Americans, you cannot make it. Mm -hmm. That's true. We have to get back together. Mm -hmm. Let mm -hmm. them know who we are. Mm -hmm. yes, that mankind know. started in Africa. Civilization started in Africa. Africa is not only the cradle of mankind, it is, it is the cradle of religion, mm -hmm. food production, mm -hmm. agriculture, animal husbandry, everything started in Africa. Mm -hmm. And everybody came out of Africa too. Mm -hmm. The oldest diaspora gave, you know, the Europeans, the Chinese or whatever. And then, uh, you know, History was distorted. Religion was used as a tool. Racism was created mm -hmm. to uh, justify our enslavement and all of that. Mm -hmm. So when we say reconstruction, reparation, it is not only giving to black people whatever was stolen from them, but also to mend the minds of these people who are racist and supremacists. Supremacist. Mm -hmm. yes. From that uh, policy called, uh, what is his name, Cover, who killed George Floyd. Uh, we, um, A normal people yeah. can do that. I forget, uh, Chauvin. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has a real French last name. Yeah, perfect name for a killer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So 
that's who we are hmm. and we have to learn more about us and teach our children about us mm-hmm. the problem of this world the problem of this country of uh, and especially of our communities is the problem of education and you mm-hmm. can't see poverty is still around slavery is still, is still around jim crow is still around yeah when i walk around new orleans i'm not i'm always upset because yeah. of the situation of our brothers and sisters hey it's critical yeah you poverty oh mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and they are yeah, we are uh, we uh, we stuck in a pattern in a lot of ways we stuck in a pattern and we mm-hmm. have a lot of times like you say it's it's education we need to be educated about our true identity mm-hmm. and the path that we've come from and who we are because once you know who you are then you know what you're going to do absolutely and uh, nobody can fool with you yes sir but they want black people to stay right at that place uh then would <clears throat> they would not even put money in their schools or whatever Mm-mm. and uh, <clears throat> i really understood racism when i came to live here with my family uh-huh and now i want to go home yeah <laughs> yeah i want to go home i'm stuck here because i have a, a child who's 16 years old Mm-hmm. he has to make it through his education mm-hmm. so i told my wife as soon as he graduates and get a job or whatever i'm gone i'm not saying mm-hmm. here yeah yeah, yeah. It's not good for us mm-hmm. oh i'm mm-hmm. not staying here mm-hmm. <clears throat> although you know days uh, the america i like and the other america i don't like yeah I mean for me yeah being born in in the states and then in the when I was 20 I lived in Africa for a year in Cameroon mm-hmm. and um you know from having that experience and having my eyes opened I I really only felt and after that I was living in Louisiana I only felt really comfortable in the south of Louisiana and those areas because it reminded me mm-hmm so much of of the roots you know and and of 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 africa of home you know mm-hmm. so yeah i can i can relate in a way with what you're saying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah maybe mm-hmm. in the next few years i may re- relocate to southwest louisiana mm-hmm. somewhere along the bayou mm-hmm. can be bro bridge or saint martinville okay yeah I uh, I'm fed up with New Orleans. I hear you. Do yeah. you know do you know Cedric Watson? Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah. I know my good brother. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm well introduced into the the black community here. Sometime on Sunday I go to Congo Square where they have drumming every Sunday afternoon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. I have many many friends in uh, you know people who are really really roots you know yeah i mean i can't wait to down there and uh, you know i'm praying that you'll still be there once i get out of where i am and make it my way back to the states i definitely want to meet up with you in in louisiana yeah i'm here i'm here okay uh right now i'm sharing my time between dakar and new orleans mhm like a six month in dakar and six month here in new orleans Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I cannot stay longer because right now I'm a holder of a green card with mm-hmm. my family. Mm-hmm. Uh, in uh, three years from now, we can apply for citizenship. But as when you have a green card, you have the obligation to stay in the United States for six six months. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I see. They just I want see. to. They just don't uh, give you that green card and you stay in your country and you come here where, whenever you want. They, they want to. Yeah. to be in the united states and generate some wealth yeah right <laughs> <laughs> they need that's your that's what it's about in their eyes uh-huh. yeah mm-hmm. 
Wow. Well, um, <clears throat> I appreciate your time. I know this has uh, been a little longer than we planned, but I really thank you for the knowledge that you dropped. And I'm sure that the viewers are going to be the richer for, for your words with us. I just may make sure to, you're going to have a lot to edit. No problem. I, what I'll probably do is, you know, I, I'm new to this editing thing, so I'm going to probably just put the whole thing on. Uh -huh. If I figure out how to edit it, I will, but um, well, you could start recording now. Okay. And, uh, yeah.